So I see any participation of the private enterprise in space exploration, not the first ones to go to Mars, not even to go back to the moon, but to make our access to low Earth orbit the efficiently costed exercise that it really should have been at the beginning of the shuttle but was never realized. And, yeah. and that is what they're doing. Yeah, but, so, but, uh, for but example, why do we want people in low Earth orbit? I mean, I just don't understand. Okay. Why, why do we want people hanging oh, out in low Earth orbit? Well, that, because they'll, they'll buy seats to take a vacation there. Well, uh, they already uh, have. <laughs> The people doing it, the people buying tickets at $20 million <laughs> yeah, a seat. A, it, so you make it $10 million, more people will buy the seat. Yeah, yeah, twice million, is, even more. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. I think it's for entertainment purposes. So then purposes. what are you arguing with me about? Well, the point is, <laughs> as a goal, as a national goal, what do you want, why do you want people in low Earth orbit other than no, entertainment? No, if it's oh, commercial, it's there's goal. no national goal. If it's commercial, it's whatever makes yeah. money. Yeah, I, no, no, I want them the there goal. because it will lower the cost of getting satellites for research into orbit. Thank you. No, no. And, well, why would it do that? And, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> is there more? If NASA needs to go back to the space station, they don't have to launch one of their own rockets. Yeah. They hitch a ride on Elon Musk. But hopefully rocket. we can get rid of the space station so they won't have to go there. Whatever well, they will need, whatever is the need in low Earth orbit, NASA should not be the truck driver to yeah, make that happen. I agree with you completely. No, so, uh, as I always do. So how do you, the, the analogy is Antarctica for me. Like you maintain a scientific presence in Antarctica. You have people there, they think deep thoughts. They, uh, I remember very well cleaning bicycle chains with a uh, chlorinated fluorocarbon, a carburetor cleaner. Can't buy that anymore because people discovered that it was hard on the ozone. Yeah. So uh, you may- So you, you killed the ozone. Yes, mm -hmm. I was the guy. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, you maintain a presence in Antarctica and you maintain a presence in Earth orbit if there's scientific things to do there. But the whole thing, everybody, is you want to explore space at a reasonable cost. This is something you do as an intellectual, uh, intellectually sophisticated society with treasure, with money, with means. You explore Lewis and Clark, explored the continent, you explore space, you explore deep space, because you don't really know what you're going to find. And I remind everybody that relativity was discovered barely a century ago. And yet everybody in this room got here on account of our understanding of relativity. I mean, you had your car navigation system. And you're, many of you were on an airplane. And uh, those are driven now by information from space. If you told my grandfather there'd be signals from space that you have to take into account both the gravity of the Earth and the speed of the spacecraft, he'd think you were nuts. But yet here we all are. And so there is a whole nother physics, yes, right there. Just it's so close. Uh, that when we discover it, who knows? And this is what, uh, I grew up in the US, I mentioned that, but what I've tried to do now, I wrote this op-ed, just remind people in the US Congress and Senate that if you don't wanna discover what makes the universe accelerate, maybe somebody in another country, maybe and, and somebody from China. But, but you agree with me that those discoveries won't be made by humans orbiting 200 miles above the Earth, they'll be right. made by oh, wonderful yeah. spacecraft that are efficient designed because by they, humans, yeah. yeah, but designed by humans that yeah. actually, you know, are cost effective. You, yeah. you said the key point. I mean, the difference between Antarctica and the International Space Station is, I don't know what the but NSF, Neil probably knows what the NSF budget is for Antarctica. It's probably can't talk less than 50 million a year. I don't know. But, but the space station is a hundred billion dollar oh, tin can sitting up there doing absolutely nothing. Well, so here's what be really good use of it uh, is to get Taikonauts on board. That, that's Chinese astronauts? Chinese space flyers would be fantastic because uh, another Cold War or even the beginning of a Cold War is very, very expensive undertaking. Well, and, and anything and we do to defuse it would be good. Th that's actually one of the, the big problems that we're dealing with right now in terms of trying to um, make science in space something that's achievable because most nations in the world are dealing with economic crises right now. And China is doing quite well, and they're planning their own space agency. They have their own space agency. They've launched their own men into space. They're in the process of planning their own independent space station that's theirs. And if we could just partner with because them Because we mm. denied their access to our space station, True. citing human rights violations. Mm. As a result, they said, we still want to go to space. We'll do it without you. And they built their own space program, mm and became the third spacefaring nation to put a human being into orbit, and their ambitions remain high. 
And, yeah. and this year they tested number one in science and technology. So can we tick you off, Neil? <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, if I may, can we get questions from the audience? Because we I was, can stand here and I was going to go, go there in just a minute, yeah. actually. And by the way, Neil, when you do that, you're supposed to go yeah. like that, yeah. because that's, <laughs> that's the throwdown. But I, I, I want to point out um, that, that the governments are actually partnering with yeah. private space well, agencies, that's, of course. Elon there's Musk the, and yeah. those guys are benefiting from Right, a, a so good SpaceX idea. has actually gotten something yeah. like $500 million yeah, sure. from yeah. NASA. And full disclosure, Elon Musk is on the board of the planetary site. So. And the, the, the their new uh, organization. Yeah, yeah, I'm not affiliated. <laughs> I just think he's awesome. <laughs> I'm just a big fan of SpaceX. Yeah. And yeah, they're building their, their heavy lift rocket, which is going to be capable of 50 tons to orbit at uh, what he's planning is a, a tenth of the cost of the space shuttle. Uh, uh, that's, that's probably right. Yeah, so, and and oh. the company that produces uh, electronic uh, electric cars or that are, that are yeah. going to be all over California. The Tesla's which are, Tesla. Yeah, yeah, which are built in Boulder, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so they, um, <laughs> I, we went to the factory, SpaceX factory, and uh, looked at the engine. I got to say, I'm a mechanical engineer. I mean, I'm human. <laughs> but, uh, you, yeah, really? I thought you were an engineer. Yeah. Um. So uh, uh, these things are very clean, and the reason is that you don't have to have tubes running everywhere to transmit pressures from one part of the engine to another. It's very nice. And we talked to Jeff Rakiki, who's the head engineer, I guess, of structures there. And he said, you know, we didn't reinvent this thing. We took the NASA documents and manuals yeah. and just read them. Yeah. So to your point, uh, the, all the patents and intellectual uh, achievements were done 40 years ago, and these guys are re-embracing it. So it's, it's good. And that's just one example. I mean, it's a good use. You know, lower, to get into space takes so much energy. To get into orbit takes about nine times as much energy. To get to what people like to call escape velocities, about twice that again. So it's... It's an old thing called the beer can problem. The amount of liquid in a typical beverage can compared to the mass or the weight of the can is about uh, what rocket fuel is to a rocket. Yeah. So you think about uh, you know, how much you could put in that little pull tab on the top, the little <laughs> opener. How so, much so it didn't have to be beer. It could just be Pepsi. I said yeah. beverage. <laughs> this, is, beverage. this is Tam. You said it's called the beer can. Yeah. <laughs> Problem. It's but called the beer can problem, and they said it's the just weight a can of problem. the mass of the beverage. <laughs> this is that, a really that's important issue. It to a whole different this is a realm. vitally important issue. But actually, but but the, but that's the reason. One of the reasons why I proposed a one-way trip to Mars is part of the reason is that coming back costs so much because you got to send the fuel there to get them back. So it's much cheaper, much much cheaper to send people one way. So are there volunteers? <laughs> because ne I have Neil. This, no, anyway. There's several people that I would. Uh, like to send one way. <laughs> uh, but it's, I th my understanding is that the qualifications are different. Yeah. <laughs> Just, Let's uh, see, uh, I, I need to bring Lawrence to a new place, if I may. Oh, wow. Is it, is it Mars? Okay. No, no. no, no. <laughs> I'm slightly scared. All right. uh, Lawrence, my distinguished colleague to my left, is, uh, has a uh, uh, let me say, party line position of the, of the scientific, much, many in the scientific community that the MAN program is largely just a waste of money, that you take that same money and for every chunk of money that you spent putting a human being wherever you were going to put them, you can send a hundred unmanned probes thousand. to go thousand. It's yeah. probably, I, 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 somewhere between a hundred and a thousand. Yeah, it's Factor about, ten, where astronomers yeah. is fine. Okay. <laughs> so, that is surely true, and I have no argument with that, but, but it assumes <laughs> but, yeah. it assumes that NASA is your private science funding agency. But the history of NASA's funding profile has never betrayed that fact. If you look at the fraction of NASA's budget over its 50 three-year life that has given, been given unto science, it will average at about 22% of the total budget. It peaked in 2004 at 40%. The recent average has been about a third. It has like never been more flight. than a half. Human space flight. The fraction of the total NASA budget given to science oh, has sorry. never been more. The average has been down in the mm -hmm. 20s percents. So what that says is, NASA was never budgetarily driven by science motives. NASA, from its conception, 
Inception, sorry. Yeah. Inception. Oh, we don't know. We don't want to talk about Inception here. <laughs> NASA, from its inception, as uh, Sir William, to my right, duly noted, was driven by Cold War politics. Let's be honest with ourselves about this. The very speech that we all remember and has resonates in our cranium, President Kennedy saying, we will put a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. You can even hear his Brookline accent as he recites it in your memory. In Kennedy Space Center, Florida, there's a bust of Kennedy. And chiseled in the granite in the main entrance are those words. There's a lot of other granite there with nothing chiseled into it. <laughs> what they could have done was put another sentence from that same speech, but they didn't. Here's a sentence from that speech. The, if the events of recent weeks, Yuri Gagarin had just come back out of orbit, and we didn't yet, did not yet have a vehicle that could safely put a human being anywhere off the launch pad. He said, if the events of recent weeks are any indication of the impact of this adventure of the minds of men, then we need to show the world the path of freedom over the path of tyranny. That was the battle cry against communism. That was the war driver. That's what dislodged the hundred billion dollars from the American coffers to send us to the moon. Let us be honest with ourselves about that. The budget for NASA has always been historically driven by geopolitical forces. Given that fact, you, if you want to have the argument that it shouldn't be a geopolitical force, that's fine. But you cannot say, you cannot cry foul because it's not science. That's, that's apples and well, oranges. Well, let, me, let, me take, let me come to your place. Um, uh, the, uh, so first of all, you're absolutely right. It's the same, by the way, is true from the field I originate from, particle physics. The huge funding for particle physics was also a, a remnant of the Cold War, a remnant of the atomic bomb project, basically. The fact that, that big science was felt to be in the national interest of national security, even if it wasn't. And by the but, way, what year did the superconducting super collider, super collider get, get its funding reviewed and then cut? It was the years shortly after peace broke out exactly. in Europe. Yeah. Okay, but there were other reasons. That's they, when they cut. Uh, no, no, but, you can say that there are other reasons, but I <laughs> submit to you, I submit to you that there is no greater driver than the war driver. And that's why I, every one of your particle accelerators was fully funded for the entire duration of the Cold War. Yes, but let me, just so let me make the point clear, though. <laughs> oh, I this. Um, but uh, le le that, that you're absolutely right that we shouldn't assume that everything is for science. What I think we should be assume is that we should just be a little honest. I, about a little over a decade ago, I actually testified for the House Committee with Buzz Aldrin on the future of space exploration. And my point is that I don't think human space travel is a waste. It's actually for adventure. I grew up staying home from school watching the Apollo landings. That excited me. I'm, you and oh, we've all been on stage with astronauts, and we know how excited people are just to be near them. And so the point is, I just think we have to be honest. We say we send humans into space for adventure, and we do other things for science. And if we're honest about it, then the science budget won't somehow keep getting cut when there's cost overruns for, for the International Space Station or something like that. That's, but, that's but my only point. But the irony is we use the international arguments to wrestle.